cake. They throw pity parties, balloon and cake. I'm in the booth, but I ain't got no cape. I'm like you, so by your side I'll stay. They call truce and go and hide and pray. They call truce and go and hide and pray. It's Thanksgiving week, and there's a lot to be thankful for on this episode of Titans All Access. Like the mayor of Murfreesboro, who's having a bounce back season all because of his change in mindset. Kevin Byard is this week's Nissan Insider. A special teams ace who's made an impact on defense. Ola Adani walks around the field with Mike Keith. The fourth round rookie who didn't make the cut initially, but is now making plays for the two-tone blue. Dave McGinnis breaks down Des Fitzpatrick's first NFL touchdown. Titans fans, we're thankful for you as this Thanksgiving edition of Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derek Henry, sacked to John Evans, A.J. Brown to the house, Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to Titans All Access with the ever festive Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. We hope you're having a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. Did you have big meals on Thursday? I had the biggest meals on Thursday. That's why I'm wearing such a big dress. That's, you know, the stretchy pants are helpful uh -huh. if you're a guy. Yeah, Tremendous elastic. stuff. Thanksgiving is so great. All the food, all the football, all the family, and all the things you're thankful for. And if you're part of the Titans family like we are, one of the guys you're most thankful for, the mayor himself, Kevin Byard. Absolutely, we're all thankful for Kevin Byard, and Kevin Byard is thankful to be having a better season in 2021. And I had a chance to sit down and talk with him on this week's Nissan Insider. We talked a lot about his mindset going into this season. Kevin Byard to the house. The mayor of Murfreesboro. He'll get reelected after that. In zone, Kevin Byard. So Kevin, for the first half of the season, we kind of heard over and over again, Kevin Byard's back. How do you feel about that statement? You know, I just take it for what it is. Um, obviously, the talk of the off season was, you know, Kevin Byard had a down year last year. And it's, you know, it's, it's kind of right. I didn't put up the statistics that I'm normally used to putting up. But I mean, I think John and, and Vrabel did a great job bringing guys in this off season, with the Nico, Bud, uh, all these new pieces, Jack Rabbit. And I think we've messed really well. The pass rush has been great. And whenever you have a great pass rush, you know, I could be opportunistic on the back end, making a lot of different plays. So definitely want to give more credit to the guys up front because they've been helping me having a great year. Did you have a different mindset coming into the 2021 season? Absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of excuses can be made, whether it was COVID, all different type of stuff. But I feel like, you know, I had to really take a different mental approach this year. Because like I said, I felt like I didn't play up to my standard last year. So I had to make sure that, you know, I had, I had to place that chip back on my shoulder that I had my first couple years. And uh, it's been working. So I've got to make sure I keep that chip. When you have that kind of success early in your career, you ended up going to Pro Bowls. You were recognized a lot around the league for what you accomplished early in your career. Do you feel the pressure to reach a bar that's maybe abnormally high? Like the field, field goal literally keeps moving a little bit? <laughs> Absolutely, because like you said, I set the bar really high for myself coming in. My second year having 10 turnovers that year, I felt like you know I can put up those numbers every single year. And so when it doesn't happen, you kind of look and you kind of evaluate yourself, hey, what am I doing differently? But like I said, I feel like my bar is high and I want to keep that standard high. So I expect the best for myself and I expect myself to make plays every single game I play in. So that's just something I had to keep going because like I said, when I don't make those plays, then I got to reevaluate. Do you extend that expectation to the guys that you're in a room with, to the enti entire secondary, really? Yeah, I mean, because I feel like just the stand that I have for myself, I feel like we all need to have the same type of standard. We all have to raise the bar. And I think that's my job as a leader, to make sure that my standard is high, to raise everybody else's standards around me, and we can all, you know, ball and make plays. So it's been something we've been doing really well this year. As a leader, you lead, obviously, on the football field, but also off the football field. You are so involved in the community around here. Um, why is that so important to you? It's important to me because I understand that I'm a person that comes from, you know, I've been through hard times, I've been through difficult times. 
And I feel like, you know, everybody in this world are always gonna be in a situation where, you know, things are always gonna be great. And so I relate to that. So me and my wife started our foundation a couple years ago to buy our family legacy fund. And we wanna just extend as much grace to everybody involved because God has extended a lot of grace to us and our family. A lot of what you do involves children and in investing in the youth. Why is that something that really kind of captures your interest? Because the youth, they, you know, they're the future. Uh, I think they're going, they're going to be the ones that change the world. I think we need to try to impact the youth as much as possible because, you know, sometimes in this life and in, in the world, you're not going to change the opinions of a lot of different people. But if you can talk to the youth and try to, you know, spark their brains, you know, it can change the whole trajectory of their life. So that's what I'm about a lot of different things. It's not just football camps or school supply giveaways or things like that. You really have a diverse portfolio of things that the foundation gets involved in. Do you have a favorite project that you guys have been able to work on? Well, I mean, last year we partnered with uh, Ryan Tannehill and we did a really great Chris Christmas event. We held it actually at Nissan Stadium and I think we gave away like $50,000 worth of gifts and toys. We was able to give a family a new Nissan car, which was awesome. And I also enjoyed doing Thanksgiving. I love giving away Thanksgiving meals, family meals to families who may not, may not can afford a uh, turkey or afford a meal. So to see the faces of the people, and especially see the faces of the children, just to have a great meal and a uh, family meal on Thanksgiving, you know, it means the world to me. That was a great Nissan Insider. Oh, thanks, Mike. Uh, Kevin Byard's a pretty cool dude. He's a pretty cool dude. Something else cool that we're involved in with the Tennessee Titans, the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards. We will present them at Nissan Stadium on Tuesday, December 7th. Earlier this week, we announced the finalists, the guys who will get to come to Nissan Stadium for the big luncheon that day. As we go to break on Titans All Access, let's take a look in Division I the first three classifications, the three finalists from each division. Welcome back to Titans All Access. One of the new additions to the Titans family is Ola Adaini. He's a guy that we have loved to watch playing on Sundays, and we've loved getting to know him. Mike Keith took a walk around the fields at St. Thomas Sports Park so that you could get to know Ola Adaini a little bit better. Ola is your nickname. Yes, sir. How do you properly pronounce your full name? Ola Sukami. But then, you know, when, when you put the accent with it, you hear my mom say it, it's Ola Sukami. Ola Sukami. Close enough. Nice, huh? <laughs> is there a significance to your first name? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it means my wealth is coming. Um, so my brother's is my wealth is here, and mine is my wealth is coming. What's your brother do? Uh, he's a medical student. Wow. Yeah. Where does he go to school? Uh, UTSA, okay. uh, San Antonio. Okay, in San Antonio. So yes, you moved from Nigeria to the United States when you were eight? Yes, sir. What Man. did you think when you moved here? Can you remember? Man, uh, coming, coming here was a land of opportunities. My mom wanted us to have a better life here. So, you know, we came and shoot. I ain't been back yet. Did you speak English at that point? Yeah, uh, our primary language is English, but we have, uh, our second day is Yoruba. So I'm Yoruba, and then, so my mom at home, she speaks Yoruba and English too. Okay, so that was advantageous. You didn't have to necessarily learn the language. English all over yet, no. The, the Nigerian people who immigrate to the United States often end up in the Houston area. Uh-huh. Why is that? Because Houston is like second Nigeria, man. <laughs> it's like, it's hot, the traffic is crazy, and it's just, that's where everybody migrates, and it's a, it's a affordable place to live. You know? and, but it really is welcoming in that way. Oh, for sure. In that there are people who could help you assimilate very quickly, mm -hmm. and it, it seems like people do really well once they go from Nigeria to the Houston. Area. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, like I said, Houston is the second Nigeria, and you know a lot of people move there, and, and you know they have a great time. All right, now you weren't a football player to start with. No, I was not. How did you get involved in football? So when I got here, um, you know, I was a soccer player. I played, well, football in Nigeria, soccer. Um, so I played soccer, came here, got to eat and got fat, you know, got a little chunky, couldn't move like that no more. So my high school coaches like came up to my mom. Well, they was calling my mom trying to get me to play. 
she wasn't having none of that. It was academics first, academics first, academics first. My uncle eventually convinced her to let me play. Went out there, started playing, and you know, fell in love with it ever since. Okay, so what's a what's a traditional meal you can throw at us for somebody who is of your bit descent? Man, um, I'm a big fan of jollof rice and beans. I, I crush that whenever I gotta eat. So whenever I gotta put weight on, jollof rice, beans, chicken, rice and stew, fufu, eba, I'm like all those. But I, I gotta lay off some of them just cause like they put a lot of weight on you. All right, so you would obviously laid off of him when you went after Russell Wilson at the end of the <laughs> Seattle game. Because, man, you looked quick. Was, was that the best moment of your career so far? Oh, man, for sure. Um, that was my very first career sack uh, during the regular season. Uh, man, it felt great. Just a, a blessing to be out on the field and, and you know, help the team win. What has it been like for you to live here in Nashville and for Titans fans to really come to know who you are? I mean, very quickly, you have become a, a name player since moving here. Bet y'all ain't never seen a Nigerian cowboy. <laughs> Holla at me. Oh, man, it's like I said, it's been amazing, man. I ain't gonna lie to you when I first was thinking about Nashville. I didn't think, you know, I would be in the position that I am here today. They created an opportunity for me. I came out here, you know, I did what I had to do. And, you know, it's love, just getting a lot of love from the fans. And it's just, it's different for me, man. I'm enjoying every part of it. Y'all already know. I don't ever got to say it. It's game day. Come on. All right, so what's your goal for the rest of the season? Hey, man, just keep stacking the wins. Um, keep improving every day and just, you know, keep getting better. What's the key to being a good pass rusher? What are you learning about that that's making a difference? Effort and finish. Effort and finish. Because Bravo says it all every day, all day. Effort and finish. A lot more Titans All Access to come, but as we head to break, we want to give you more Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award finalists. This is classes four through six. This is Coach Mack. We're going beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. This is first down. You can see it's on the plus 18 yard line. What we're lined up in here, this is 11 personnel. You've got three wides, uh, one tight end, and one back. Lovey Smith, defensive coordinator, is showing blitz. She's got a free safety in the post. And what you're going to see here, you're going to see a nine ball stack up here to the offensive right side. What they are trying to do with this is come out of this nine ball stack in a starburst formation and once they get into the starburst watch the quarterback look off the post safety safety that's in the middle of the field he's going to look him off Des Fitzpatrick makes a nice uh, move to the outside to stick the corner comes inside right towards the goal post perfect throw perfect catch they bring five the five people that they bring on this blitz are blocked up perfectly now the score 19-6 after this touchdown Time for us to talk ball, presented by Dunkin' with General Manager John Robinson. Hope you get to spend some time with your family on Thanksgiving Day, a little downtime at least. Yeah, it was good to break a little bread with them, have a little family fellowship. All right, so we just saw Coach Mack showing us Des Fitzpatrick's touchdown catch last weekend. Des Fitzpatrick is a, is a pretty interesting story. After you drafted him in April, he doesn't make the ball club initially. For 75 days, he's on the practice squad and now he's part of the team. Talk to me about his improvement and what he adds. Yeah, I mean, he's really worked hard and probably improved as about as much as any player on, on the football team. Every receiver is different, and they've got to kind of find their niche. And, you know, Dez is improving on, on doing that. He made some contested catches for us in the Houston game, and we're going to lean on him here as we move forward. All right, let's talk about this weekend's opponent, the Patriots. They've won five in a row. They're seven and four, and it seems like the improvement has largely been keyed by a defense that is just stopping everybody. What's got their defense going now? Yeah, they're, they're playing really sound defense, Mike. You know, they got a bunch of good players on that side of the ball, but they're all playing well together. You know, Hightower and Bentley in the middle. You know, those are two big, fast linebackers that you know, really lead the charge. They've got Vanoy and Judon on the edge, really disruptive edge guys. I think overall team defense, they're playing really sound football right now. What has impressed you about their rookie quarterback, Mac Jones? I think it's his poise. You know, he has been really poised. Uh, you can tell that he's played at, at a high level uh, at a big time program like Alabama. He's taking command. You can see him being vocal in the game, on the sidelines. 
Uh, he's been decisive with his throws. He's making good decisions. The stage certainly hasn't proved too big for him. So no surprise, big challenge this weekend for the Titans. Yeah, we're going to have to play good football this weekend, Mike. Talking about good football right now, let's talk about some of the top players in the state of Tennessee. Earlier this week, the announcement made the finalists for the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards, which will be presented on December 7th. John Robinson is going to be there, excited to have that all go down. Why is it so important for this organization to support high school football in the state of Tennessee? Well, I mean, I think that's where the foundation is laid, you know, from a football standpoint. You know, that's where these guys learn you know, the importance of hard work and, and teamwork and dedication and sacrifice and accountability. Being a part of that, supporting that, uh, putting our arm around high school football here in our great state is something that's extremely important to us. Thank you for your support of that and thank you for taking time to talk ball with us. Let's go, Mike. Tighten up. Presented by Duncan, John Robinson. As we go to break on Titans All Access, let's take a look at our Mr. Football finalist in Division Two and our finalist for kicker of the year. We welcome you back to Titans All Access. The Titans and the Patriots this weekend, and we know about the matchup. It's the third time that Mike Vrabel is coaching against his former coach and his former team, and that storyline's already been thrown out a bunch this week. Yeah, yeah, it's what they talk about. And every time the Titans play the Patriots, that storyline is gonna be thrown out as long as Mike Vrabel is the coach of the Tennessee Titans. But here's something that may surprise people. We had a little fun with the Titans rookie class when they came in back during the summer. We asked them, did they remember Mike Vrabel's playing career? Not so much. Watch this. I heard the name before, but I didn't like know who Mike Vrabel was, no. Yeah, he was pretty, he was a beast. Have you ever seen Mike Vrabel play football? I have not seen it. I've seen a whole bunch of snippets and stuff, just him talking, and obviously I watched Taylor Lewan's podcast, so just hearing all that, but I have never seen him play football. No, I never watched him. I think maybe I heard of him when I was little. I remember his name. I remember playing as him on Madden when I used to play video games and all that stuff, so it was kind of a trip. Do you tell the head coach no, that you used to play with nah. him as Madden? I mean, it'll probably come up, but I feel like, no. Nah. I watched the videos of him at Pro Days over and over going against other players in the draft from years before because I was worried about him coming to my Pro Day and me having to go against him because he's big. No, <laughs> I hate to admit that. <laughs> I hate to admit that on camera, but I'm going to go watch him today. Yes. My dad and I done a lot of research. No. Do you know that he did play football? Yeah. Do you know where he played football? No. <laughs> where did he play football? I read it, but I forgot. Oh my God. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know who he played for. I'm not even gonna sit right here. I, like I do. I know he's but he was good though. He was good. I know he's he was good. Very good player. Uh, Ohio State. Okay. That's where he went to college. Okay. Let me look that up. Yeah, it was on Twitter somewhere, and I for, totally forgot. He played defensive end, and he played for the Steelers. Uh, I don't know who else he played for. He also won a Super Bowl. He played linebacker, right? Oh, yeah, he played linebacker. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. He was a linebacker. Yeah. Okay. But he also played special teams, so I know. He's a grinder. Yeah, it's going to be fun to go back and watch those tapes. He, he's good. <laughs> that was fantastic. They really didn't know. No, they really didn't know. And maybe for future jobs, they will Google their boss or at least run it through the interwebs a little bit. It's, but it doesn't seem to be affecting them. They're doing OK. No, everything turned out just fine for the Titans rookies. Yeah, but I'd say after this week, they know Mike Vrabel played in the NFL. Yeah, I think they're aware. They're yes. aware. All right, we need to get a break. When we come back, we talk Titans, Patriots. And what do we talk about? The keys. The keys. I got them right here. It's the best part of the right show. Here. Stay Come tuned. back for them. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Titans All Access. It's time for Mike Keith's keys, and these keys are so good, we finally got them sponsored. So Mike Keith, this is your new tag. Mike Keith's keys, presented by visitmyrtlebeach.com. I love Myrtle Beach. Titans fans belong at the beach, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I've been to visitmyrtlebeach.com. They well, have great offers. Well, Mike Keith, they are now sponsoring your keys. Well, Take it you. away. Let's do it. All right, key number one. 
Receivers gotta win. Not sure who's playing receiver for the Titans this weekend. We're not so sure, but they gotta get separation at the line of scrimmage. They gotta make the catch, and they have to make contested catches. This defensive backfield for the Patriots, 18 interceptions on the year. They're ball hawks. Titans receivers can't let it happen. They got to win. What's your second key? Front seven on the Titans defense has to have a big day. That means stopping the running game for the Patriots, which is vastly improved, and getting pressure on rookie quarterback Mac Jones. That front seven of the Titans has to play bigger than they did last weekend. They got to be good this weekend against the Patriots. All right, the third and final key to beating the New England Patriots. Win turnover sack ratio. Now, maybe you've heard me talk about this in the past. You combine your turnovers and sacks against the other team's turnovers and sacks. Last weekend, Titans turnover sack ratio minus seven. They got to win that this weekend. They got to take the ball away on defense. They got to get quarterback sacks. They've got to not turn the ball over on offense. They've got to protect Ryan Tannehill. Those are big plays. Those are game changing plays. Those are plays of emotion, especially on the road. You can't let bad things happen to your offense and you've got to inflict some pain on the offense for the New England Patriots. Those two things have to happen up front win the turnover sack ratio. All right, those are three pretty good keys. And, you know, if the Titans end up getting that win over the New England Patriots. You mean win? There will be a big party in Myrtle Beach. There you go. Yep, there Vis you go. Visit MyrtleBeach.com, sponsor of the keys. Yep. Thanks very much. Yep. All right, so we're on our way to New England. We'll play in Foxborough. The game kicks off at noon central time. We're on the air at 11 a.m. central. Amy Wells, Rhett Bryan with Titans Countdown. We hope you'll join us on your favorite Titans radio station. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.